Hey, welcome back to What Is Ken Doing? It's been several months since we've done an update on this Jeep. Um, last one we did, I think, was probably back at the end of March. And ever since then, the uh, the work season has kind of kicked up and gone full, full blast. And uh, just kind of not really had a whole lot of time to work on this stuff. So last week or two, I uh, finished up the, the Jeep. And um, just wanted to take a minute and show you what's going on with it. I thought this kit would be a pretty quick one to put together. Figured it'd just be kind of an in and out, you know, week or two kit, and didn't take too long to realize there was a lot more detail involved in this than I thought there was going to be. You can see there's lots of things that I wound up scratch building. You probably remember from the previous updates that this kit uh, I put together as a replica of a friend of mine's Jeep, and so. Uh, took a lot of time to kind of do some details that weren't necessarily a part of the kit uh, so you can kind of see uh, some of the different things here the the uh, foil down at the bottom and on the back caps um, the the header mufflers and uh, you know the modified the wheel slightly to match what was on the the original Jeep and uh, you know just a couple of different little things here and there that just kind of make it a little bit more personal than just a box stock kit. Uh, I bought this kit off eBay. It was partially assembled and um, there was more glue in some parts of this than there was styrene. And uh, one of those spots, unfortunately, was the windshield. And you can kind of see, if you look into the corners of the windshield, the, uh, the crazing in it. I actually sanded that windshield down with uh, wet sandpaper, 2,000 to 3,000 grit paper, and then uh, used Future on it. Got a lot of the crazing out, but it was so bad on the edges of it that there was really not anything else I could do with it. Um, I could have probably just cut a new windshield out of something else, but I just, um, you know, kind of just wanted to get the project finished up so I could move on, move on to the next kit, which I'm going to show you just a quick preview of at the end of this video. But I'm going to take a second and just kind of show you some of the details here. Uh, this kit came from the factory with uh, intended to have a 304 AMC V8 engine in it. And um, the didn't think that was appropriate considering that uh, my friend and I put a 350 Chevy engine in his Jeep. So of course this had to have the right, the right engine to match his. Um, and uh, the the original Jeep has a chrome grill assembly, so we chromed this one. That bumper that you can see here is a replica of the custom bu built bumper that's on his Jeep as well. And uh, that was actually kind of fun to do. Uh, a little bit of a challenge. It took some time, but that's okay. It was it was worth it. And see if we can kind of let you see a little bit closer. Even the even in the in the corners of the the bar in the center um, where it's just two two pipes standing up with a pipe between them that's actually exactly what the other bumper looks like and um, you know how it's how it's got the angles back like that and stuff so uh, that was that was pretty fun to do <clears throat> he has diamond plate on his and so uh, I have a sheet of diamond plate styrene and when I made a, a panel for it, it, it just stood out too thick. So what I did instead was I actually just took some uh, aluminum foil tape and uh, burnished it against the diamond plate and then cut it. And you can't see the, the diamond pattern in it real, real well um, close up there. It looks like the camera is kind of focusing in some. Uh, you can see it in there. Um, and so I kind of wish it stood out a little bit better than that. But uh, it's still visible and it doesn't look like it's way out of scale there. Um, the, uh, the, you can see the mufflers here. Uh, we put purple horny uh, header mufflers on his. And so I uh, bought a couple of different sizes of styrene and uh, made, made those, painted them with acrylic purple paint and bought, you know, the little three or four ounce jar, whatever, not even that. They're just, um, they're uh, two ounce little containers. And I think I used about three drops of paint to paint both of them. So I'll have that on the shelf for next time. So uh, that that's like that. His Jeep is a daily driver. Um, it gets beat up pretty good. And so uh, we didn't want this to be a, um, a showpiece. And so we've got the grease on the engine and uh, on the transmission, the, the dirt and stuff underneath. 
that kind of thing. So, uh, you know, painted the shocks uh, traditional Monroe yellow and uh, made those a little bit dirty as well. Um, his his Jeep doesn't have race white letter tires on it, but um, I I actually used uh, acrylic paint on the the white letters, and then um, I fogged the tires with black testers enamel uh, just to kind of dull them down a little bit, and then used uh, chalk pastel dust and uh, hairspray to uh, to mud the tires up, and mud up the the wheels a little bit as well. So his Jeep doesn't go off road a whole lot, but um, you know it's it's a Jeep, so it should probably look like it's been in the mud once in a while. Um, used the stock seats in it, uh, which is not what his has, um, but they um, they are traditional Jeep seats and uh, flat black for the carpet in there, just flat black paint. I didn't flock the carpet, and then again uh, used some uh, chalk pastel to kind of dirty up the carpet a little bit. Some of the some of the uh, pieces in this kit didn't fit real well. The um, I don't know if you can kind of see that. Let's try my other light on here so you can maybe see a little better. But um, the the um, shifter and uh, things like that they they kind of sit a little too close to the dashboard. I wish that that would have sat a little bit farther back. But um, you know it, it is what it is and it's it's done. So we've got the dashboard detailed out and the AMC insignia on the dash painted uh, to match what would be appropriate as well so the um, the engine here get the get the hood open I don't like the way that this is you actually have to assemble all of this stuff in one shot because otherwise you can't use the hinges to hold the hood on and uh, so that was kind of a hassle because I had to assemble things and then touch up paint on the corners, uh, and I didn't I didn't think that that was a real good design. But um, you know it, it worked out and it was fine. But um, we've got the engine kind of detailed out here a little bit, and uh, it's this engine is actually not technically a Chevy engine. I have no idea what it is, but it looked close enough to one that I thought it would work. And then I did put Chevy valve covers on it. So, uh, but it's, you know, representing a 350 engine and it's, um, it's wired, they got the distributor wired and um, got the battery wired as well that the uh, battery grounds to the firewall and then the uh, positive lead heads down to the starter, it's glued in down at the starter as well. And of course we had to paint the engine orange because Chevy engines should only ever be orange as far as I'm concerned. But um, there's the, the master cylinder. I actually cut the power brake booster off because his Jeep has manual brakes. So I just cut that off, glued that to the firewall, and then actually used some fine gauge wire and made the, uh, the brake lines there, which are kind of showing up there for you. Um, all the headers are scratch built with solder and uh, that took a while to do and they're not perfect representations but plenty close enough for uh, for what this is and um, I mean I used several different colors of black and brown and uh, some chalk pastels and stuff to kind of make the, the headers look like they were rusted they um, you know they were just flat black painted uh, from the factory on the on the real ones and that black paint burns off pretty quickly So that's what we kind of wanted to represent uh, with that as well. So that was a fun little project um, You probably won't be able to see Inside the grill, but there's a scratch built electric fan behind the grill um, and then there is also a electric fan that I put on the inside here Let's see if we can get that into the shot here for you um, see if we can kind of zoom in a little bit and yeah there it is um, kind of a that, I don't even know what kind of kit that was off of but it's um, you know we we did electric fans on his we didn't want the fan rotating in there and uh, they they seem to work quite a bit better because it gets so hot in that engine compartment for that that 350 with the headers on it so wanted to replicate that and uh, we've got there's you probably can't really see it too well but there is a couple of different vacuum lines uh, handmade from some anodized wire 
and then there is the fuel line that I have uh, bent. I've actually bent that out of a piece of copper wire and uh, see if we get a little bit closer shot yet. Yeah. Uh, goes from the carburetor, gets bent down, goes down the front of the block and then it's glued into where the fuel pump goes. So did that too. And uh, you know some people say not to do too much detail on the engines. I don't know I kind of like the most the more detail the better as far as I'm concerned. So uh, whatever you you have time to do and and are still enjoying the project I say go ahead and do it. So this was a fun kit to put together but like I said it did take quite a long time a lot longer than I thought it would um, and uh, so this one will get put on the shelf and uh, we're gonna move on with it so but uh, yeah I definitely recommend the kit if you're if you're into doing different kinds of stuff uh, you find one of these on eBay I think I probably paid 10 or 15 bucks for it and um, I think it was worth it you know it, I had to kind of deconstruct some stuff that was that was there and um, try to clean up as as much of the glue as I, I could to make it a little bit more presentable because it was it was pretty bad uh, when I got it. Um, just kind of digging through the box here, dig out the the engines to just to kind of give you an idea of just how much glue was on this thing. Here's the here's the engine, and um, you know you can see they just kind of dumped the glue in there, um, and uh, it was it was pretty bad. That's how the whole thing was. So. Uh, I think it turned out pretty well, all things considered. So uh, that's that's the end of the of the Jeep project, and um, hope you've en enjoyed watching the very extended season of of Project Jeep Glue Bomb. But um, yeah, that's that's the end of that one.